Let's begin by defining lucid dreaming. Yes. Well, lucid dreaming just means dreaming while knowing that you're dreaming. So it means being conscious of the fact that you're dreaming while it's happening. Most people will have experienced lucid dreaming at least once in, usually say in a nightmare, recognize that oh, this is all a dream and then waking up. But a uh, few people have taken it to the possibilities it offers, uh, the kind explored by the Tibetans, for instance, that you could stay in that dream and then use it to explore impossible realities somehow. Some people think of lucid dreaming as being a distinct altered state of consciousness. Well, it is definitely a unique experience in that uh, the ordinary dreams we have every night, uh, first of all, are a world that seems as real as the one we're in right now. Yet, uh, it's all clearly in our minds, mm -hmm. as we discover when we wake up. Lucid dreaming adds something extraordinary. It adds consciousness, full consciousness, that you are dreaming at that moment. So you're sitting here, as we might be, mm -hmm. when you suddenly realize that, oh yes, you went to sleep this afternoon, and this is an afternoon nap, and all of this is going on in your dream, mm -hmm. for instance. Everything might seem just as real as it does right now, except for you would know that there wouldn't be any laws of physics or any laws of society that you had to concern yourself with. So it gives you a great deal of freedom at that point. But it would seem as real as this, and it's an extraordinary experience. People find it uh, uh, astonishingly empowering to, to see that their mind has that capacity. Mm -hmm. in, in other words, you can do anything whatsoever in, a, it, in the lucid dream state and do it consciously. Yes. Well, anything within the limits of what is imaginable. There are some things that are, say, uh, inconsistent with themselves that couldn't be imaginable, but basically, you're limited not by the usual laws of physics and laws of society and other external constraints on mm -hmm. you as we are limited greatly in waking life, but you're limited only by what the limits of the mind might be, which uh, in practical terms often is your own expectation. So if you think you can't do something in a lucid dream state, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, in fact, say if this were a lucid dream right now, and I said, well, this chair here is not really solid, it's just a dream, so I should be able to pass my hand through it. But I might not be able to just because of my long-standing experience with chairs that they are solid. And mm -hmm. so that unconscious expectation might interfere. Until then, I imagine, for instance, let's think of that chair as slightly porous, and then my hand begins to pass through, and then I'm able, by overcoming that expectation, to pass the hand right mm -hmm. through. And in general, we find that we're limited by our expectation. If you think that the door is locked, uh, you don't find out that it's not. Right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be locked. Mm -hmm. These mental constraints can be mm -hmm. as much a uh, constraint as physical exterior ones. It would seem then that practicing uh, in the lucid dream state would be uh, practicing the art of imagination. Yes, yes. Uh, it's very true that, that there is an art of lucid dreaming. It's not something that once you know, oh, this is a dream, then you know how to do everything. There are certain arts you have to uh, develop uh, to find out exactly how you can accomplish tasks. Because we have to overcome our very extensive sets of expectations based on our experiences in waking life. Because we have, uh, in perceiving the world around us right now, uh, a major determinant of what we perceive is uh, what we have perceived in the past, what we have uh, seen in the past, what we therefore expect to perceive now. And so uh, one of the things that people, in, when they're first beginning to learn lucid dreaming, constantly are doing is they're doing things that would make sense if they were awake, but don't make much sense while they're in a lucid dream. So for example, in one case I recall, I was going across um, the dream Stanford campus uh, I didn't know it was a dream yet, and I had left my briefcase behind. So I was going back to get that briefcase. And now I realized I was dreaming. I said, oh, this is wonderful. So I started to fly back to where I was going without immediately occurring to me. Well, there's no use in getting that briefcase. It's only in a dream. So mm. it doesn't make sense any longer. But we have to overcome those tendencies and to rethink the new world we're in and mm -hmm. think, well, what are the rules here? Well, what makes sense for this new kind of life uh, sphere I'm in? Yeah. So I, it's one thing to be aware of the fact that you are in a dream, and it, maybe it's another thing to, to be aware that you're caught up in various layers of, of yes. logic uh, yes. th that you don't ha or that you can stay in or not as you choose. That's right. Well, these are unconscious <coughs> largely, these expectations about how the world works. And so we don't notice them until in the dream we notice this 
doesn't make sense in the world I'm in any longer, mm -hmm. and then you're able to change them. Mm -hmm. So there's a learning process that goes on where you, your thinking gets clearer. You get more precisely adapted to the dream world because the rules of the dream world and the waking world are, are very different and mm -hmm. there are certain commonalities but there's also very important differences and uh, it's important to know which world you're in in order to uh, play the mm -hmm. proper game. Mm -hmm.